Hey guys, real quick before we get started, I do just want to mention that during this video, I, my phone was dead, so I had it plugged in and charging, and the charger was just constantly pulling at my phone, causing it to shake the camera. So I am aware of this. I know it's super annoying. I apologize, and I will be sure to fix that issue next time. Also, just a reminder that all products used will be linked in my Amazon shop, and that can be found in the description below or by going to my website, thoughtfuldots.com and clicking on the tools I use tab. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Hey guys, so today I'm going to be painting on the seven inch wood boards. Uh, these are from Walmart. And this one, I already took the little tag off and the sticker. I just wanted to show you this because if you have any wood pieces that have stickers right on them, you can get them off eas more easily if you heat it up with a hair dryer, then it peels off without leaving that sticky residue. I'm just gonna do one layer of a black base coat and this is Folk Art Multi-Surface in Pure Black. Okay, and then we're gonna let this fully dry. And next we are going to find the center. I just kind of guesstimate this, but there are a ton of videos on YouTube that will show you how to find the perfect center. I've done it this way forever though. And yeah, I just go with it, it works for me. So I'm just marking about halfway. And I turn it a couple times. And then I just put this on that little mark I made. And then I pull it all the way to the outer edge. And then I go to the other side. And I can see that it's off a little bit. So I just adjust it. Okay, and then once you have your center, I'm just going to take this and put it right over that center dot. And then we're just gonna make our guide marks. And then I'm gonna put the pencil back in here. up on this wood Lizzie Susan and I'm just gonna make some guide marks going around now this is an old compass that I've had for a while and it's kind of flimsy so when I do the lines I like to hold it tight up here so that it's not opening as I'm turning And these lines are not any specific distance apart. I'm just kind of eyeballing. It's better to have too many guide marks than not enough. So you can do as many or as little as you want. So if I had to guess the distance of those, I'd say a half centimeter, approximately. And I'm gonna be using these more earthy tones. The red one is Heritage Brick. The orange is Burnt Orange. The green is Desert Cactus. Yellow is Deep Ochre, Okra? I don't know how to say that. The brown, darker brown is light cinnamon. And then we have Mississippi mud. And then I will probably use just like a lighter beige colors for some accents. 
I'm just grabbing a paper towel to wipe my tool off in between. I'll be using my Happy Dotting Company tools and some nail styluses. And I do not have a pattern picked out, so we're just gonna go with the flow. So if I end up using brushes, I will show you those at that time. Or if I use any other tools, I will be sure to show you. And I will link all the tools in the description of the video below. Okay, and I might also use some gold and copper. This is glorious gold and bright copper. So for the first dot, this is covered, but this is the happy dotting company tool. I'm gonna use 12 and a half for the center dot. And larger dots can sometimes get these little bubbles that poke out of the side. And the best solution I found for that is to make sure that you have enough paint and you're not like pushing down all the way and just kind of tapping. And if you do get that bubble, just like turn your tool a little bit as you're tapping down. And that should help get rid of any of those little bubbles poking out the side. So after the center dot, I always like to have a highlight type of color. So I'll either usually do like a lighter color or a metallic. So, for this one, I think I'm gonna do the lighter color. And I've just, in my head, feel like this helps outline the center dot and kind of just make it pop a little bit. Oh, I'm using the small end of the pink tool. And we are just going to get these dots as close to one another as possible without touching and then as close to the red dot without touching it. We just want to make sure nothing's touching so that the paint isn't running together. And I do not count these dots. I just... Do one next to each other and fit as many as possible and then hope that they all fit together at the end. I thought this color was going to be more beige and it actually looks more white but we're just gonna go with it. That was a pretty good center dot. So at this point, I don't really wanna wipe it away and start over. As I get to the end, I'm just kind of eyeballing, trying to figure out how many dots I can fit in that section. So I think I can fit three one, oh, that was a little big. Two, tight squeeze. That one, I accidentally did a little big, but it's okay. Once we do the next layer, you won't really be able to tell. And my phone was dead, so I have it charging right now. So it might be moving a little bit. I apologize, I know that's annoying. Okay, now I'm gonna do gold. And I'm gonna do the same Actually, I'm going to go a little bit bigger. I'm going to use the large end of the white tool. And these are not going to go in between the first row. They're just going to be their own thing. So I'm going to go a little bit bigger. So I'm just doing a row right above. This is kind of looking Christmassy. I shouldn't have used that white. But I'm gonna keep going with it and hope that it doesn't end up looking like Christmas. And I just kind of tap these I feel like that gives me more control over the size. 
if you don't do the tapping motion, then your dots will be smaller. But I feel like that way it just lets me build them so I have more control over the size. It's also really hot in this room, so I have the window open, so shaky camera, wind outside, sorry. Okay, and again, I think I can fit three right there. It's kind of tight. So then sometimes I make them a little bit smaller to fit. I mean, that's really obvious. I'm gonna remove these three. I just got this Q-tip wet with my mouth and you can use water if you want. Okay, I'm not gonna be too nitpicky about it, so I'm just going to leave it like that. And I think once we do the next row, it won't look, you won't be able to tell as much. I'm gonna use the larger end of the blue tool. And for this part, we will go in between every other dot. And again, I feel like that tapping just really lets you have control over the size. And when you're doing these like in-between dots, you can like start in the center and push more to the right or push more to the left, depending on what you need to do for it to be more centered. I feel like a lot of this painting for me is optical illusion. Um, hopefully I can explain more of that to you while I'm doing this because you'd be surprised a lot of the time how much I incorporate el optical illusion type methods. Like sometimes if I get to this point and these ones are all spread out a lot and have a lot of space, then I'll just go through and dot, do a lot of micro dots in between and it kind of just tricks the eyes a little bit so you can't see that gap. Um, I think I'll do one more. I'm gonna do this green color. Maybe I'll show you guys how I do that. So we'll do the same blue tool And again, we'll just go in between. I really wish I didn't use that white. But what can you do? Nothing. And also, if you have a hard time with spacing or if you 
experience your dots running together a lot, this every other method will be helpful, especially if once you do every other, if you just let it dry for a little bit, that way when you go back in between, you have a less of a chance of the paint running together. So you can start to see how there's more gaps. So then I just kind of build the dots. And sometimes the second dot will be a little bit bigger, but <clears throat> again, it's one of those just illusions that I honestly don't feel like most people would be able to tell. And I will show you what I do with those gaps. And see, like that one doesn't have as much as a gap as the other one. But for the next part, I feel like it kind of helps hide those little mistakes. So you might just want to let this dry for a little bit. I am impatient, so I'm not going to let it dry. But um, if you're worried about your paint running together, definitely give it a second to dry a little bit. I'm using the small end of the paint tool and I'm just getting some of this yellow. And then I'm going right in the gap there. and just doing a yellow dot. right at the tip of those green ones. And this just, with the eyes looking at it, it just, fills in those gaps a little bit. And then if you have any dots that are too far apart or too close together, this just kind of helps take the attention away from those mistakes. And then you can also take a super micro tool. This one's from the Happy Dotting Company. And then to further just fill in that space, do another micro dot. What do you guys think? I feel like that really helps hide any of the spacing issues. I'm gonna use the 5.5. I'm gonna get the orange color. And I'm just placing on these vertical guide marks that are going all the way around. and I'm skipping every other line. Again, once I do a big dot and I'm going around it, I like to use some type of highlight color. So either a lighter color or a more vibrant color or metallic. So I'm just gonna go with this white. I'm using the large end of the pink tool to do a dot. Oh no, I hope that Orange and white doesn't look like Halloween. I'm just getting every holiday in this mandala. 
always reminds me of candy corn. But sometimes you just have to trust the process and hope for the best. Now I'm gonna use the small end of the pink tool and we are just going to dot and drag around the orange. Just doing a little comma or swoosh. And if you don't yet have like the accuracy or precision, if you're newer or just more practicing, then I recommend letting the orange dots dry first before going to this part because if you accidentally touch it with the white, it won't blend together if that dot's dry. But if you do it wet, you have to be really careful or just have good accuracy so that they're not touching. Okay, next I'm gonna go with yellow. Oh, is that gonna make it look really candy corny? Um, ah, I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> uh, I'm taking the large end of the blue tool And I'm doing three dots on top of this one. Maybe instead of candy corn, we'll think sunshine. That's where my brain went. So maybe it's just about perspective. I'm just keeping everything in line with that vertical guide mark. And then I'm just gonna flip the tool over. Mine's really dirty, so I'm trying to get the gunk off. The small end of the blue tool. And we're just gonna do the same thing. Dot and drag next to the white line. So I like to dot and then I do like little swipe motions.
I don't think it looks like candy corn. Looks better than I thought it would. So I'm actually testing these colors out for a large mandala I'm going to start tomorrow. And I think for sure I am going to swap that white color out for a more beigey color. Maybe a khaki tan instead of whatever color that is that's really white. Okay, I am going to grab a brush. So I left my brush in the water again and I bent it. So recently I learned that if your brushes get bent like this, you can dip them. And I don't know about any other brush brand, but this one works. I've done it. You can dip it into boiling water and it straightens it out. But since we're doing a video right now and I don't have time to go boil water, I luckily have another set. So these are the U.S. Art Supply brushes. And I'm going to use the 2 over 0. Okay, and I'm going to dip this into the Mississippi Mud color. Just lightly. Don't want too much paint because we want these uh, uh brush strokes to be on the more thin side. So I'm just going right on the outside and bringing it to a point. Just doing this very slow and I'm making sure all the tips line up on the same guide mark. Okay. I'm going to take the size 8 and get the red color and make some bigger dots right in between the patterns that we just made. And then I'm going to take the larger end of the pink tool and the gold and just walk the dots around the red dot.
And then I'm going to take the small end of the pink tool and get the gold and I'm just going to walk some dots right down this little gap here. I'm going to do the green, and I'm using the large end of the green tool. I'm going to do the three dots again. And I'm going to take the large end, actually I'm going to take the smaller end of the white tool and just drag these little swoops again. And if you guys hate these colors, you can always just do this pattern, but in different colors or vice versa. If you like some colors that I use, but not the pattern, you can just use the colors. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this, well, I'm gonna use the light, uh, slightly larger brush. So this is the number one. And I'm gonna go for the darker brown color, which is called light cinnamon. And I'm just going to do some more petals. Okay, and then I do want to add some little tiny mirrors on here, so I'm gonna show you guys how I do that. I have a couple different shapes and sizes, so. Bear with me as I just try to figure out what sizes I wanna do.
I also have these little tiny mirrors that I got from Hobby Lobby. So you just peel them off. They have an adhesive, but since I do sell my artwork, I don't really trust them. So I go ahead and glue them on anyways. So I just peel them apart, stick them to my hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. I get a pair of tweezers. And this is the glue that I like to use. It's really great. It's thick and it's a gel, so it stays put. It doesn't run. And it has these like squeeze sides that push it out. So I feel like you get good control with them. So I'm going to be doing these square ones right in the center here. And then I just take one and place it on top and then use my nail. You can use a tool if, I don't know. My tweezers are sticky, so I need something to push it down. a little bit of glue on that one, so I'm just gonna grab a Q-tip. I just got it wet with my mouth. You can use water if you think that's gross, I don't know. You can still wipe the guide marks away <clears throat> once everything's dry. Um, I did reach out to Deco Art Americana Directly, I sent them an email asking them if their Americana paint needs a varnish or if their paint is okay without because I let them know that I like to use mirrors in my art and uh, most of my patterns build off of the mirror. So it's not like I just leave the space empty and go back and put them on at the end. Like sometimes I actually need the mirrors as part of the pattern. So... I asked them if the painting needs a varnish once it's complete, and they said no, that Deco Art Americana is um, fine on its own without a varnish, and that's kind of what I expected because it's a higher quality paint. And they just said that some people uh, like to use varnish to protect the painting from dust or UV light rays or whatever. Uh, so it's not necessary, but they did say that if you did want to add a layer of protection, you can use their DuraClear brush on and kind of like brush around the design if you wanted, but I don't. Okay, and then I'm going to add these ones to the tips of these. Okay. So these ones are from Amazon. I just got a bag of them. Some of them are broken. I just throw them away. You don't need a lot of this gel. You also don't want it to Deep out. So yeah, I just get my fingerprints all over these things and then at the end I clean off each tiny little mirror and I'm just trying to get them as best lined up on those guide marks as possible. It's not perfect. And now I'm going to 
I'm gonna take the smaller brush again, the two over zero, and what do I want to do? I'm gonna take the gold and I'm just going to outline the mirror. That was my stomach growling, if you just heard that, oh my gosh. So just go really slowly and you just want to make sure that you're not touching the mirror. Okay, so there's our gold. And now, I think I wanna do, red, orange, yellow. I don't know, I'm just experimenting. Take the same brush and the red color, and now I'm gonna do a shorter, line just a little bit shorter than the last one and we're going down right next to it Okay, next I'm gonna do orange. And I'm gonna go even shorter. Okay, and now I'm going to do yellow. Same thing, going all the way around. I'm going to do this one shorter. Okay, and lastly, I'm going to take the Mississippi Mud color, and I'm going to go up a size and brush to one and make these just a little bit thicker. Okay, so the idea for this color palette was like, this is called Desert Cactus, and I love this color. So it's kind of like a desert cactus theme. I don't know, you guys will have to let me know what you think. I keep looking at it and I'm unsure, but then I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. I don't know, yeah, let me know what you think. Now I'm gonna take this green color and I'm going to Do 
to some swooshes right here. And then I've really been lover loving uh, layering the brush strokes. So I'm going to take the smaller brush, thinner, and just get a little tiny bit of gold on it. And then just layer right over the center of the brown. Just gives it a little more dimension. Sparkle. Now that all the colors are starting to dry, I'm liking the color choices more. As they become more matte and not so vibrant. Okay, I'm just gonna let this kind of dry for a bit. I wanna add some top dots here, here. Oh, I'm just gonna add one more little thing. I'm gonna take the small end of the pink tool and just do some dots in between there. Okay, that's good for right now. We'll let this dry, add some top dots, and we will be done. Okay, now that this is dry, I actually really like the colors, so I'm glad that we stuck with it. So I'm going to use some Nuvo Drops. This is Copper Penny. And I'm going to go over these brown dots just to give them some more layers. Texture, dimension, I love texture and dimension. So almost all of my art pieces are just full of layers. And I absolutely love it. So we are just going over the brown dots. Love that. And I'm also going to use this on top of the orange dots. And these are really like plump, puffy, raised paint, and they dry that way as well. They don't flatten out. And I also like Nuva drops because they don't give peaks. I feel like the liquid pearls that I sometimes use, those recently have been leaving peaks and I really don't like that. I use the five and a half, actually I'll use the six, a little bit bigger. And I'm just gonna make some top dots over the red ones. And I'm not pushing the tool all the way down. I feel like if you kind of hover over it, that also gives you more control over the size.
And I feel like those top dots really just bring everything together and finish it off. Okay, I actually really love it now. And this is a seven inch. I think what I might do is put some, I don't have any, I've never made magnets, but I know they make like magnet tape. So I think I might put a couple uh, things for the magnet on the back and just stick this on the fridge. I really, really love it. All right, I'm gonna wait for this to dry. These dots take a while to dry, so I'm gonna turn this off, go to the gym, get some stuff done, and then later this evening, I should be able to wipe off the guide marks. Okay, and now that this is completely dry, I'm gonna take a Pampers wet wipe. And I'm just going to start erasing these guide marks. I like to go in circular motions because like these raised dots in the center, sometimes it's hard to get in between there. I have nails so I can kind of get some of those trickier spots, but I feel like the circular motion kind of helps get in between there. And those little trickier spots, if you don't have nails to push like that, then um, you could use a Q-tip. Just going around those little mirrors. If you're using a high quality paint, then erasing guide marks with a wet wipe should not affect your paint. If you see a lot of like the black base coat coming off, if you use a different base coat, then it could just be the quality of paint. That's why I prefer a multi-surface or outdoor paint for the base because it's more durable high quality and it's not going to wipe off during this process. And it's okay if your mirrors get a little bit streaky because we are gonna go back and clean them one by one. It's a little bit more tedious, but it's better than having streaky fingerprint mirrors. And again, you can varnish this if you want. Deco Art, when I reached out to them via email, said that Deco Art Americana paint does not require a varnish but if you want to use one, then they recommended DuraClear, which is a brush on, and you can just brush it on around these mirrors, but I am not going to do that. And you can also grab a Q-tip and get those harder to reach areas. And now we are going to get just a little piece of paper towel and some glass cleaner and just spray a corner. I like to wrap it around my finger like this. And we are just going to clean off all these little mirrors. The edges are sharp, so the paper towel can get stuck there. You can also just use um, a cloth for this if you want. Okay, so that is it. We are done. 
I actually really like these colors now that it's dry. I really love a matte finish, so I know a lot of people like to do a high gloss, but I really love the matte. Okay, so I Amazon overnighted these and this brand was terrible. I used four magnets on here and it was still sliding off the fridge. So I do not recommend these. So then I ordered these other ones. If this works, which I haven't tried yet, then I will add these to my Amazon shop. Okay, so it comes with this little sticky thing. And then just can place it. It's not very centered, but it should be okay. Let's go see if it sticks on the fridge. This is my coffee corner and I already have another mandala here that was made by another artist. And here's the test. And it works perfect. Yeah, the other ones were just sliding off. Yay, now I have two. I'm so happy with how it turned out. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do end up making this, please make sure to tag me on social media so I can see what you create.